Today I'm going to install these 48 volt controllers on my uh, Razer E300 electric scooter. This scooter originally runs on 24 volts. I have a need for speed, so I'm going to install a 48 volt controller with a 48 volt lithium ion battery pack to make it run faster. Now I have two 48 volt controllers here. They are both 48 volts, but they are quite different. Uh, in this video, I'll do a short review of these 48 volt controllers. I'll show you how to install them. And finally, I'll compare the performance between the two controllers to see which one is better. Let's get started. Right, so first of all, let me show you these controllers. They originally came with these connectors. And I don't have these connectors, so I just cut the connector out and solder my XT60 connectors on these. Because I use XT60 connectors on everything. So that would make it easier for me to use it. Also, uh, the throttle cable, it has three wires. And uh, I use a computer a power supply connector and solder it in here on the controller and also on the uh, scooter itself. That makes it easier for me to plug it in and unplug it. Both of these I bought from eBay and uh, this one is about 12 to 13 dollars. This one I got for 15 dollars. And the price difference is only a few dollars but uh, they're quite different. This one is rated at 500 watts. This one, 1000 watts. So when I received this controller, they didn't come with any instruction or user manual whatsoever. The only clue I've got is a little sticker on the uh, connector. Even that, some of these connectors don't even have sticker or anything like that on it. So it's all about guessing games. And this one here even comes with a connector that's labeled derailleur, which is weird. But it has three connectors, and uh, I was guessing it was the throttle, because usually a throttle controller for a brush motor has three wires, one red, one black, and the, uh, the third one is a different color, usually uh, it's green or yellow. So basically they have many different connectors. The brake connector is usually uh, black and yellow color. Brake light is usually uh, black and red color. Small wires. The bigger wire is the uh, power connector that goes to the battery. I'll see what else you got. But uh, I only use three connectors in uh, this controller. First of all is the power connector which is uh, black and red. It has a bigger uh, gauge wire. And this one goes to the uh, uh, 48 volt battery. The blue and yellow wire, the big gauge wire this wire goes to the motor of the uh, scooter and usually usually the blue wire is positive and yellow is negative not always the case you have to hook it up to your motor and uh, try it to see if it, the, the wheel goes forward or backward the third connector I use is the throttle this is the only uh, three prong connector in this controller and uh, usually it's red and black and a different color. Um, this one is green. I've seen some with uh, yellow color. This one here is red, black and blue. The last connector that I have to install is the uh, power connector on the 1000 watt controller. It's labeled as power lock on the 500 watt controller there's no label but this cable is usually red and blue in color 
you can see here I already have a paper clip and uh, I short them out so it's permanently on because uh, I haven't got a uh, power switch for this yet but on this one here I already installed a switch down here so, so this connector is going to plug right onto the switch this is the switch that I use for the uh, power switch and coincidentally it's got two pins and it plugs right in to this connector just like that and let me turn it on you can hear when I press a button it will turn on the relay and you can hear a click there we go you can hear the relay click when I turn it on so it's, this is just a coincidence but it works great for me right so you can see the power switch is down here on the top this is the uh, switch for the LED light front headlight the bottom is a power switch so what I do is I just plug it right in the switch just like that boom and I'm done it's very easy just like that and I turn it on press a button you hear the relay click it's on and let's test and see if it works there we go now I can do the same thing for the 500 watt controller I used to use a paper clip and sort it out right here you can see but uh, I don't have to do that anymore because this is a, exactly the same connector so if I want to use a 500 watt controller on this scooter I just have to remove the uh, 1000 watt controller and I just plug this right in the uh, throttle that I use is just a cheap regular uh, twist throttle I got for about three dollars so it's very very cheap but it's it works really well the only thing is the connector the connector that comes with this throttle is a male connector and on the controller the original connector on the controller here is also exactly the same connector so they don't they don't fit so what I did is I use a I cut it out and uh, solder a uh, computer connector to the controller and to the uh, throttle so that they can fit it's uh, very easy to install on my uh, handlebar here and uh, surprisingly it works really really well so next I'm going to compare the performance between the two controllers I also have the uh, 24 volt controller here you can see how smaller, how much smaller it is compared to the 48 volt controller uh, I want to see how faster these 48 volt controllers compared to the original 24 volt controller okay, so first I want to compare the speed of these controller when they're not under load so I've got my tachometer here I'll see how fast it goes Okay, so first up is my 24 volt controller. Now on this 1000 watt controller, there is a connector, let's say sport, not sure what it is, maybe a sport mode, that runs faster, I don't know so I'm going to find out. I shorten out the pins with a paper clip here, and let's see how fast it goes on a sport mode. Two hundred and forty something. Exactly. 
exactly the same speed. All right, here we go. This is the 1000 watt controller in regular mode. All right. Here we go. My God, that get my adrenaline pumping, especially when I sit so close to the ground. One hand holding the camera, the other hand holding on the throttle, on the handlebar. I've driven about two miles, and it does get a little bit warm, but it uh, doesn't get hot. 24, 24, 25 Celsius. So this run is for the uh, 500 watts controller. I just came back from a test run with the 500 watt controller and I was able to get up to 25 mile per hour. It's just a little bit less than the 1000 watt controller which got up to about 27, 28 mile per hour. But the real difference is when I go uphill. On a steep hill the 500 watt controller struggles a little bit whereas the 1000 watt controller just zips through the hill just fine. That's one important thing I need to mention about these two controllers. They have phantom load. What that means is it draws power out of the battery even when the controller is turned off. What happened was the last time after a test drive, I left the batteries plugged in the controller for a couple of days. The battery still had about 75% charge. When I came back after a couple of days, the batteries were completely empty. The test lights were flashing indicating they were seriously low and need to be recharged immediately. This is extremely bad for these lithium ion batteries. They don't like to be drawn down to 0%. You only have to torture them this way for a few cycles and that will completely destroy the batteries. So for these controllers, after you're done using them, you just have to unplug the batteries. As far as speed goes, for an adult, it can go up close to 30 miles per hour. The no load speed is about 37 miles per hour, so for a child that's less than 100 pounds, it might go over 30 miles per hour. And at that speed, it might be too dangerous for the child. This scooter is specifically built for a child, not an adult. Even for an adult, it's still quite dangerous at 30 miles per hour. And at this speed, if you get into an accident, you're going to have serious injuries or death. So try this with extreme caution and at your own risk. All in all, these two controllers perform pretty much similar if you have a light load. But if you have to carry a bigger load or go uphill a lot, the 1000 watt controller is a lot better choice. And it costs only a few dollars more, so that makes it easier to decide. And that's all I have for now. I'll see you next time.